When we look around at the conflict in the world and the poverty and disease and affliction and political warfare, do you ever wonder how we survived to this day? Do you ever wonder how we haven't blown ourselves up yet? Are you assuming that we are in that process now? Well, you wouldn't be the first. It seems people have been anticipating the end of days since the beginning of them. And yet we haven't managed to kill ourselves off yet. Despite the tremendous number of people now on this planet, we have actually grown exponentially more peaceful per capita than at any other time in recorded human history. How could that possibly be? Because we are actually predisposed to collaborate. We light this chalice in the spirit of unveiling, for we would see behind the scenes of what has been hidden. We would know the truth. We are ready to learn from our mistakes. By this light, we find our strength. Humans, like many other animals, are an interdependent species. We rely on the strength of the group to protect the individual. Over and over again, we demonstrate our desire for and need to collaborate with each other. This is social as well as biological. Diversity of the gene pool and survival of the species relies on our ability to collaborate and adapt as a group. Unfortunately, we too often lean on the paradigm of sharing a common enemy to create that unity. So much so that society is often manipulated into believing there is an enemy, just so a coalition forms. And that coalition is rarely intended to combat the imaginary enemy as much as it is to accomplish separate unknown objectives, typically political or financial in nature. Of course, there are genuine enemies out there, but are we perceiving them at the same level as their threat? Are those whom we've been told to fear truly as fearful as we've been led to believe? Are we being separated on purpose? Knowing that there are those who wish to manipulate our emotions for their own political or financial ends is the most important part. It's difficult to be manipulated when you can see it happening and know why they are doing it. All the better if you can manage to have some compassion for the reasons why they might. But even the metrics of evaluating our sources of information are often manipulated as well. It's hard to know whom to listen to. When in doubt, however, ask yourself, is this loving? I've always been fascinated by the idea of the Big Bang. I often wonder about what might have existed prior to the explosive moment when all that we behold in the cosmos first violently expanded from a tiny speck. It leads me to a thought that perhaps there are periodic Big Bangs in the life of our universe. Things which explode and then in the floating vacuum of space gradually return to unity, only to explode again and unify again. What makes that happen? I can't say for certain that it's even true, but when I look at the tendency of fragments floating in a bowl of water to join and combine as their own wispy gravitational pulls slowly reattract to one another, I have to admit humans are no less susceptible to that phenomenon. We just can't help ourselves. We fight and do horrible things, yet we are bound to one another. We refine our relational practices continuously. 
What is the inner directive which motivates us towards this innate unity? Put your faith in that. That is the phenomenon that will ultimately save us from ourselves. Sometimes in the midst of all this social turmoil, I find myself resisting the urge to despair, or at least trying to. But then I meditate on the fact that our separation is an illusion. I think deeply about the connectivity we all share, even when it looks like the opposite. It comforts me. Now, if, God forbid, an alien species descended on our planet with the intention of destroying us all, we would immediately see how truly bonded we are. We would see how pointless and futile our childish sibling arguments have been. We would know what is truly important in that moment and what is not. Can we choose to see that on purpose? Must we wait for the threat of annihilation to join forces more deliberately? Must we have a common enemy in order to recognize our deep and abiding friendship? On your deathbed, what will you think was important about your life? Will you be glad for all the enemies you maintained? Will you be proud of the resentments you held, the grudges you continued? Likely not, because they are not natural to us. Collaboration is natural. Hostility is not. Cooperation is essential and instinctively ours. Spend time considering the presence of collaboration in your life. Many things we can do on our own, but must we? Where are the opportunities for us to invite others in? Even if some of the time that might otherwise be spent doing the work or used for explaining and hearing out the other, it is well worth it in the end. The work will benefit ultimately. A charity that has only one big donor might help a few, but one that relies on the support of many will help many. Allow your work to be made lighter by many hands. Your natural human desire to collaborate, even when you don't think it's necessary, will have a ripple effect throughout the world in ways you cannot imagine. At the very least, it will improve the quality of your own experience. And that is plenty. Be at ease now and breathe. Close your eyes if you are willing and relax gently into your seat. As you breathe, picture your worries and troubles and distractions covering you like a thin coating of wax on cheese. Breathe in again and imagine the wax splitting open and curling away, revealing a new skin beneath, a new ease, a readiness to move forward and breathe. Envision now a thin silver thread emerging from the middle of your chest as it extends away from you, lengthening off into the distance, you feel a gentle sensation of pulling in your solar plexus. A tingling sensation that rises and falls with the breath as the thread grows in length. Imagine it extending toward the heart of another person the moment it makes contact, something amazing happens. You are suddenly able to see something that was there all along, hidden. Thousands of threads, silver as yours, extending from and traveling to every imaginable direction and distance, beginning and ending at the hearts of all those around you. This is the truth of things. There's a connection among us we cannot see until we choose to. This network of silver threads is what binds us and protects us. Even from our own worst impulses, it is not foolproof. It is not the answer. It is the pathway for it. It is the infrastructure of it. 
It is the network upon which our great human collaboration occurs. Remember this series of threads. Picture them when you are speaking to someone with love, but especially hostility. Remind yourself of the existence of these invisible connections. Send love across them, even toward people who challenge you, even when you are in the heat of an argument or a debate. Send love across the thread. Do it now. All shall be well. Take one final breath and return. <laughs>